There is no method to developing confidence. Like, look at me, what the fuck am I doing? The method is you. So when you have that unwavering sense of conviction, that's now attached to your character, character, conviction, confidence. That's the triad, baby. That's the triad that follows you everywhere you go, man. All right, my friends, today we're going to talk about a topic. It's called confidence. And confidence is actually a very simple thing. And I spent so long trying to find confidence that I fucking just looked everywhere but where confidence was. And that confidence is to be found in yourself. Oh, I'm not confident. <laughs> exactly. That's why you're not. <laughs> like, once you're okay with that, you can be a goof, you can be an idiot, you can be a moron, you can be awkward, you can be weird, you can be introverted. Once you're okay with all of these qualities about yourself, and you don't care to change them anymore, then you found confidence. Right, you simply don't give a fuck. Because that's just... You don't need the validation of other people. So I, I remember years ago, right? I would try to be confident and then I would try to relate to people. And then I would try to, you know, there would be awkward pauses and stuff, right? Because I was too trying too hard to, to relate. And then when there would be awkward silence, then, you know, uh, just, you, you know, you, there can't be awkward silence or you have to chip in. Um, but then, you know, it's th this kind of like, this kind of attitude is Jeffrey. As Hamza calls it Jeffrey. Um, when you try to relate to people, that's that's why you can't relate to people. It just makes you that much more of a loser. And and this this lack of confidence really is is, I think at the root of it, right? It stems from this this sense of discontentment with your own life, um, and then kind of having this false hope that like you know imaginary one day when you find that confidence then you can start loving your life and that's exactly the kind of trap i fell into right um but over the years is this this realization that trying to be happy and trying to do everything that's expected of me by the culture in order to validate my happiness was exactly what was keeping me sad you know, I played all of these games that I didn't even want to play. Um, I keep coming back to this same kind of theme, but it's like I wanted to hang out with cool kids because that would validate my status. I wanted to, some relationship because I wanted the world to prove to me that I was lovable. I wanted good grades because that would verify I was smart. I wanted to be smart so I could make it into a big university. I could I want to make it in a big university so I could make it in a big job. And then I wanted a big job so I can make big money. And then I want big money so I can find big happiness, right? So this, this lack of confidence stems from always being discontent with your life or the other way around. Always being discontent with your life makes you crave confidence because you think that like one day you're going to get it, right? Once you achieve something big enough. Um, but, but like the transformation for me was like realizing, you know, big university is a big joke. Big job is a big slavery. Big happiness is a big sadness. It's like the complete opposite of what you're told. Um, and then I, it's, it's like, once you fucking can admit that to yourself and, and, you know, stop pitying yourself so much. It's just funny as fuck because it's like, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. Um, <clears throat> and you start to realize how free you are in, in the way that like all of these things that's expected of you, you like if you follow like a good little boy, um, you, you're trapped because that's not what you want. You want to become authentic. You want to break free. And then all these arbitrary boundaries, they're just, they're just arbitrary boundaries for the ways for the infinite, infinite amount of ways that you can go about life. Right. And, and you have to think about, like, you took no part in setting any of those. But you internalize them because you per perceive them to be, you know, as real as four physical walls that surround you. But that's exactly the illusion that you need to break out of, right? Andrew Tate calls it the Matrix. And you see how trapped you are. Then you want to break free. Um, but then 
trying to break free is in itself another trap. Because then you play this whole confidence game on yourself, right? And you realize you don't have to do anything. It's all bullshit. Confidence is bullshit. You know, every, all that is bullshit. And you stop caring. You stop caring. You know, and then you, then it dawns on you, you know, for me, it was like my entire life. I'd been giving away that confidence that was already within me to other things. That I was told would make me happy or make me, you know, fulfilled, make me confident in some way. But, but when you stop trying to look outside for anything and you just kind of learn to embrace who you are and like, you know, all your flaws, all your fucking like weaknesses, all your, whatever, your pathetic things about you. And you stop trying to always put yourself down and that's when you, that's when you finally find it. Um, and so you have to stop going outwards for, for the thing that you're looking for. You need to start going within. And so, for example, like for me, when I no longer gave my power away to the university and the nine to five career system, that's when I realized all the power was within me to kind of, to create the life that I want. And when I got tired of trying to appear confident, and that's when I flowed effortlessly in conversation. That's when people were drawn into my energy and then interested in what I have to say and even looking for my approval, which is like the last thing I would ever expect, uh, considering how much approval I always seeked in the past, right? When I stopped trying to be relatable and instead just became the relation to people in terms of like just being myself and just like no matter how awkward, how silent, like whatever, just embrace it, fuck it all. And then that's, that's, that's when I was most engaging and I could look people in the eyes and just like be willing to be awkward and at the same time be willing to have long engaging conversations with them because I wasn't caught up in my mind anymore about who I need, who I should be, the person I needed to be, the, the fake act that I need to put on. Basically, you just have to stop putting on this fake act and then you can find what you're looking for. You know, all these, you know, d d dating advice and you know, game males and like the big alpha males and gym bros and all that, right? It's a fucking big, uh, big guy syndrome and all that, right? But, but at the end of the day, it's a fucking it's just insecurity to try to cover up with some defense mechanism, right? And so that's what I realized about confidence. It's confidence is about being secure in insecurity and being unafraid of fear. You're not afraid to fear. It's okay to fear. It's okay to be a little bitch. What makes you a, a real little bitch is your refusal to be a little bitch. Okay? That's... So when you don't... When you don't give a shit, when you're cool with being uncool, you're okay with being unashamedly weird, and you can be humorous about things when you totally fuck up. That's when that's the energy that people flock to, right? Your spirit that's so free and so full of life that you just like just flow effortlessly in the moment, and then you can you just you're able to adapt spontaneously to unexpected situations that you know curveball at you, and then these are the kind of situations that like other people would be frozen by, but you just you just roll right through it, right? Like judo, like wada. And, and that's the energy that's magnetic and contagious because you're just so light and playful. It just light, lights up the, dark, the energy of a dark room. And it also makes other people light up out of their seriousness, their fear, their anxiety, and their frustration. You know, this, this kind of like unconditional playfulness is, is what makes a man have a depth and a presence. It's your ability to be with the moment as it is and that's the aura you radiate, right? So you just you're standing in the face of it. You're unafraid of how awkward you feel, how silent the room is, how weird or uncomfortable. And it's like I experience this all the time. It's like sometimes I'll I'll just sit in that like awkwardness or silence, and then I can feel the other party, the other person or group of people they like contract a little bit in discomfort. <laughs> Should I say something? <laughs> and then. <laughs> And I know this because I used to not be able to tolerate moments like these. Um, but when I stopped trying to change the moment, and I finally began to see how it's like exactly these moments that define how comfortable you are within your own skin. How unafraid you are of your own flaws and that of others. 
And people, especially women, can sense that aura of how available you are in that moment. And they naturally look up to those who can stare fear down in the face and laugh at it when everyone else is frozen in, in anxiety and tension, right? When you're not obsessively fixated on fixing your flaws, you don't project that same energy onto other people when they, you know, accidentally reveal theirs, right? When, when their veil falls thin and then they reveal theirs, right? But that's exactly what makes people feel safe around you. It's when you can offer them that empty space, that safe space. That's what allows people to start expressing their true selves. When, when they can feel your emptiness as an open space, as an open presence, unreactive to these flaws, and they feel your inherent acceptance of that entire moment as, as a harmonious part of the human condition, then they feel safe with you. They feel like they can trust you. And naturally, a much deeper relationship can start to form because now you're both dwelling in that space where both people are open to a, a real connection without the persona and I, like like i just said a moment ago it's like one of the biggest places you'll notice this as a man is that this sort of effortless magnetism and attraction starts to develop when you interact with females and you don't need to learn any game or techniques to trick women into being with you because quality women can sniff your bullshit from a mile away and chances are that if you're managing to pull women somehow playing your insecure boy games, all that means is that she's got a bad nose, bro. Okay? The quality of women that you pull into your life only reflects the quality of a man that you really are underneath. And they can sense when you put on this fake confidence to the world. Well, only those with the good noses can. <laughs> but you get my point. Um, so you can't game your way to true confidence. You develop this main character energy and you become top stack by becoming authentic. There is no method to developing confidence. Like, look at me, what the fuck am I doing? The method is you. So you have to find your own way and then you find your own flow. And then true confidence is an embodied conviction of the character that you carry around with you. So when you have that unwavering sense of conviction, that's now attached to your character. And your character, your conviction, your confidence, that's thats the triad, baby. That's the triad that follows you everywhere you go, man. And every man has their own style of being, okay? So my confidence is completely different from another man's confidence. For example, mine is like a stoic, observant one based in, you know, quiet, swift action. While the, you know, the cliche kind of confidence is an outwardly talkative and charismatic man. And... You have to realize that you have to stop following that formula for that for that cliche kind of confidence because there is no one kind, you know, you have to embrace your own and there's no one that's superior to the other. You just have to discover what it really feels like to be in your unadulterated form. Second thing is you have to admit your own weaknesses and faults. You have to not be afraid to admit them when it's glaringly obvious and not, you know, try to push it down or project blame onto something else in order to save face. You have to learn to embrace them as part of your greatness. So you have to admit your weaknesses and faults because that's the only way you're going to work on them, right? That's the first of all, right? And you have to realize that dark things about you are the very things that are going to contribute most to your virtues and your success. Now, Carl Jung said that your dark side isn't something to be condemned and wailed over, but is something to be recognized as contributive to one's greatness and to one's positive aspects in the same way that manure is contributive to the perfume of the rose. I love that shit. And a man who can admit these things about himself is noble because this is a man who is honest, who is open, who is unafraid of himself. He's so unafraid of being himself, so unwilling to cower behind his own bullshit that this reveals his strength and character residing underneath. It's solid. It's foundational. And this is a high quality man a woman can trust, man. All right. So this is the entire secret to your entire life. If you're not completely sold on yourself, 
forget about trying to sell to others. Because when you have truly sold yourself for the first time, you will see with this inconceivable clarity just how simple everything is. So you got to sell yourself first and everything else will follow. And the reason you aren't confident is because you are not sold on the fact that you need not do anything to be confident. You think you have to attain something to finally get that confidence or to finally like just embody that just become that energy without trying to become it. You know what I mean? Like, just fucking just embrace everything about you. And that's when you're sold on yourself. Because you're no longer looking for someone else to validate you, for some external circumstance to validate you. If you're sold on yourself, that means you just embrace whatever the fuck it is, is, is you know, you're happening in that moment and you're not fixated on an outcome on letting external circumstances dictate your self-perception and that's when you're sold on yourself and when you're sold on yourself then you can sell to others all right this was a different energy video from typically i guess i just felt like fucking getting this shit done and flowing with it <laughs> so it's actually a lot better this way if you found value in this video give it a like you know, leave a comment. What what do you want me to go more detail in? Subscribe. I'll see you next time. Peace.